Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week wisdom and legacy-building podcast. This is day 413 of our trek, and today is Philosophy Friday. Every Friday, we will ponder some of the basic truths and mysteries of life and how they can impact us in creating our living legacy. Today along our trek, we will discover some practical guidelines that will assist you in preparing for and living each season of your life to the fullest so that you will succeed even through the winters of life. We are broadcasting from our studios at Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. It continues to be a warm summer here in Charlotte area and has also been warmer than usual both in Ohio and Arizona where we've spent some time. So it is nice to be able to work most of the time indoors. It has been a busy week of activities, but this evening three of our children will be over for dinner, so that should be a great time together. As we get together, it is a time for sharing and learning more about life's lessons. And on today's trek, we will explore some of those lessons in life on a trail called The Practical Principles and Guidelines for Life. Here are some practical principles and guidelines that will help you to maximize each season of your life. They are not in any particular order, but they are all gems that will make a huge difference in your season of life long term. So let's get started discovering these gems. So here we go on our trek for today. Never spend more than you make. If you cannot afford to purchase something with cash, then just don't buy it. There are very few true necessities in life, and learn to sacrifice now so that you won't be a slave to debt long term. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 tells us plainly, Just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is a servant to the lender. When you live debt-free, it gives you the options and the freedoms that you won't have when you borrow. Next is, be willing to live a frugal lifestyle in all areas. Now this may include the way you dress, what you spend on entertainment, and vacations. You can have all of these without spending a lot of money doing so. In fact, you'll find that you'll have less stress, more joy, and more peace, even if you don't have all the material things that you desire. Next is that on a personal level, except for a home which should increase in value, do not borrow money. Even with a home, only purchase what you need and can afford, including allowances for repairs, maintenance, and yearly fees and taxes, because these things will occur. Next is never co-sign a loan for someone else, no matter how close you are to them. It is exactly the same principle as borrowing money for yourself, except in this case you don't even own the item that you purchase, and this is not wise. Next is to realize that the purpose of transportation is to get you to and from locations. If at all possible, pay cash for a vehicle. If not, only purchase a very basic transportation, not the car that the dealer thinks you can afford, because their sole purpose is to sell cars and to make a profit. Next thing to consider is be willing to give up habits that are not only costly, but usually not good for you. Now these things may include drinking, smoking, gambling, even on lottery tickets, overeating, and impulse purchases. These seemingly small purchases can add up to thousands of dollars per year. Be willing to make small sacrifices now so that you will have options in the future. The next advice is to don't use credit cards. And the only exception to this that I feel is valid is that if you have the discipline to use them as a cash card and you get some sort of earning bonus from using them. The rule here is that you have the money in the bank to cover all your purchases and you pay them off in full every month. No exceptions. And if you currently do have credit card debt, pay them off as soon as possible and don't use them again. Throw them out so that you won't even be tempted. The next piece of advice is to create a budget and stick to it. To be prepared for all seasons of life and to survive the winter seasons, you must plan ahead and stick to your plan. Next is, if you are currently in debt, stop all non-essential spending until the debt is paid in full. Make sure that you're honest with yourself on what is essential and what is not. There are very few expenditures in life that are truly essential. Now this may mean that you need to cut out cable, have a limited phone plan, and limited internet. No eating out, no costly entertainment, purchasing secondhand clothes, and secondhand household items. But think about it this way. If you're unwilling to sacrifice now, when will you later? It is your choice to be a slave for life or to know the freedom of living without debt. The next is very important. Change your vocabulary from spending to investing, and it will change how you view purchases. Investing should bring a good return. Spending never does. So when you think about spending money on something, is it a wise investment to do so? The next piece of advice is to work hard, but take time to relax and recharge in the appropriate seasons of life. Next is to learn to enjoy your work. It all boils down to choice, as do most decisions in your life. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19 tells us, And it is a good thing to receive wealth from God and a good health to enjoy it. 
to enjoy your work and to accept your lot in life, this indeed is a gift from God. The next piece of advice is don't accumulate stuff. The more you own, the more you are owned by those possessions. Learn to live more minimalistic. It will save you money and you'll actually be happier than if you have a bunch of stuff that you rarely use and cannot really afford. It is ridiculous to spend money on stuff and then to have to spend more money to store the stuff that you rarely use. The next piece of advice is very simple. Learn to live on less, not more. Next is, don't try to keep up with your neighbor. You really don't know what their situation is. They may be drowning in debt or have other serious issues with their family. As King Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 4, Then I observed that most people are motivated to success because they envy their neighbors. But this too is meaningless, like chasing the wind. The next piece of advice is to eat healthy and wholesome foods. It is less expensive long term, especially when you consider the cost of health care. And following up on this is to minimize eating out. Take time to cook at home and control your portion size. The next piece of advice is to exercise and stay active daily. A good brisk walk each day will work miracles physically, mentally, and spiritually. The next is to meditate or pray every day and then read and study good books. Next is to take time to be grateful every day. Make it a habit of thanking others even for the smallest of tasks. Next is to integrate the attributes of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control into your life. Master them so they become part of who you are, and then everything else in life will be viewed from their proper perspective. The next piece of advice is very important. Learn to love yourself unconditionally. There is only one you in the world, and you have the capacity to change your world for the better. No one else can do what you can do to make a positive impact on your world. Next is to celebrate life each day. It is a gift from God which will multiply the more that you give it away. Next is to never stop learning. Every obstacle or challenge is an opportunity to learn and improve. Also, never stop dreaming, regardless of your age. Now, I will be 60 years old at the end of this month, and I have never been more excited about the potential of the future than I am now. Think about it from this perspective. With today's medical advances, I could easily live to 125, which means that I'm not even middle-aged yet. Now, if I use the accumulated wisdom, experience, and knowledge from the first 60 years, just think about the impact potential that I can have during the next 60 years. With the technology advancements of today, there are no practical limitations. But to follow up on this, when you have your heads in the cloud streaming, make sure you keep your feet firmly planted on the ground. Next is to have faith that if you're honest and disciplined in your life, that it will turn out just fine. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 tells us, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Next is to take the mantra of no more excuses. It's never too late to become what you want to be. Practice empathy and compassion. How else will you become good at them if you do not practice them? Eventually, they will become a habit. To follow up on that, practice the golden rule at all times. Which leads us to the next, which is to help others succeed, and in turn, you will succeed yourself also. And with that, don't criticize or become negative. Life is too short to live negatively. And lastly, a point I want to bring forth is to take time to laugh, to stop and smell the roses, to enjoy the journey of life. You only have one life to live, so enjoy each day. I have a simple plaque that Paula's Aunt Pauline gave me many years ago when she noticed how much and hard I work, and it hangs in my office. Now I have to read it occasionally to get me back on track, and this is what it says. If you keep your nose to the grindstone rough and keep it down there long enough, in time you'll find there's no such things as brooks that babble and birds that sing. Then these three things will your world compose, you, the stone, and your worn-out nose. Now, the older and wiser I become, the more this poem really means to me. Yes, I still work hard and enjoy my work, but I do try to take time to listen to the babbling brooks and the singing birds, to enjoy our grown children and grandchildren, to enjoy life and its journey, regardless of how rough the trail is at times, to be prepared for each season of life, the times of working hard and the times of leisure. Today we've discovered several guidelines that will help us to be more effective to navigate the cycles and seasons of life. And next Philosophy Friday, we'll begin to explore some of the lessons from Jim Rohn's book titled, The Five Major Pieces to the Life Puzzle. I think you'll find these insights very interesting. I know that I do. 
but our next trek will be Motivation Monday, where we will explore more trails on how to get and stay motivated to bring value to your world. So encourage your family and friends to join us and then come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. Now we'll finish our trek for today. Just as you enjoy your daily doses of wisdom, we ask you to help us to grow Wisdom Trek by sharing it with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person when you meet with them and invite them to come along with us each day. If you'd like to listen to any of the past daily treks, they are available at wisdom-trek.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Wisdom Trek so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And I would also appreciate it if you take the time to rate and review us on iTunes or Google Play so that others will find out about Wisdom Trek and join us each day. The journal for today's trek is available at wisdom-trek.com. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you on Monday.